Good morning, Giants. Have you ever wondered how to cultivate your masculinity? Stick around. Good morning, Giants. Welcome to Wake Up With Giants TV. Hey, today is going to be an excellent, amazing show. But before we dive too deep, we wanted to uh, make sure that uh, you knew about our Kickstarter that's happening. We're, uh, we launched a few days ago, and we are just off to the races on our Kickstarter, loving it, uh, raising funds so we can do the coloring book and the leather bout uh, special edition version of Wake Up uh, or with a... Uh, Giants in the Smalls. We can do that too. Leather bound, wake up with Giants. Yeah. Hey, leather bound. We should. We should just like wrap ourselves in leather. <laughs> Golden bust. That's wake up with Giants. Hey, leather you know that actually would be kind of cool. A jacket, yeah. a leather jacket. Right. So you're creating right here on uh, Wake Up with here Giants TV. Yeah, that's where the ideas stem from. It's scrolling down at the bottom. So if you have the opportunity, go check that out. See what it's about. Um, we're, we're making a, a difference in a hundred million lives. So we're excited about that. And, uh, you know what I'm excited about Nick Smith? I don't today's show. Yes. Yeah. And I love that we're all in red. Yes. It's a beautiful thing. Uncoordinated. We didn't talk about it. It just happened. And so I want to introduce our guest. We've got Fiona Ross all the way from UK, the UK, and she has a mission. She has a mission to see the world where there's equity and that replaces dominion. And so she wants to see where the masculine and feminine engage in a beautiful dance together with res respect and harmony. Man, I'm struggling over my work today. So who is she? Technical <laughs> issues. We don't have technical issues. We just yeah, can't no, speak. No, no, no. We have tongue issues, right? <laughs> so Fiona is an intrepid. So she sees opportunity that inspires her to take action on them, right? She believes in a created life in equity and bold personal leadership. And she's the founder of Fiona Ross coaching for men. And what's amazing is we're going to be talking about masculinity and Fiona is going to be telling us about it a little bit. And, and we may get off track here and we'll do that, but we want to welcome you to the show. Thanks for being on here. Thank you so much. So can we dive into your journey and go back in time, go back in time. Where would yeah. you like to go? What was it like growing up for you? Where did you grow up and what was your family life like? Do you know, I had I had an incredibly normal and wonderful loving upbringing actually. Really can't complain. I've had I've had a, a very um it was it was really nice growing up. I loved being a kid and I I had a um well, I have a brother. And there were two boys that lived next door. So I grew up with, with boys. I was the youngest and it was the hand-me-downs and the trying to keep up with the guys and looking up to the guys thinking they had such an incredible life because they could go to bed late and climb trees and do all this amazing stuff that I couldn't do. And uh, so I think my fascination with the masculine actually started when I was a child. I think I've been, I think I've been on this journey my whole life. Yeah. Isn't that paradoxical a little bit that mm -hmm. that here you are coaching men on masculinity as a woman? Yeah. And, and it goes all the way back in time to that moment growing up where you had a, a really healthy childhood and you see these boys climbing trees, doing things. And you're like, oh, I could do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently my mother tells a story where I spent my very early years, like as a, as a toddler, just running after these three boys shouting and me. And me. <laughs> I love it. I always wanted to keep up with them. And, and uh, yeah. And I questioned, I, you know, as, as we grew up, I used to, I used to really question, what's it like to be a boy? You know, it was just fascinating to me that, that um, the, the, the path they would tread as opposed to the expected path I would tread as a female. Yeah. Amazing. So what would it be like? Did you, so as you had these thoughts and feelings and emotions, did you have any negative experiences around that? Any naysayers or bullies or any, any of those experiences? No, I was, I was a bit of a tomboy. And um, so I think um, probably because I hung around with boys, my mum would invite little girls around to, to play with me and I'd just leave them in my bedroom and go off and play with the boys again. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and I think because I just thought they had more fun. And um, <laughs> we definitely maybe get. Yeah, I had more fun because of them. I don't know, but no, mm. I, I didn't have. There was no. There was no time in my life where I could say anything really bad happened. I was just. Yeah. I was just intrigued by 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 kind of what I perceived as an advantage. So we're talking the 1960s and 70s, so late 60s, early 70s when I was little. Um, and it was just at that time when, you know, women were burning their bras and stuff like that in the UK anyway. So women's lib was was kind of the thing. So I, I always felt I, I grew that. up in... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always felt that I actually grew up in a very equitable world I didn't I didn't ever feel that I was done down as a as a female and it's it's probably only as I grew older and I started seeing things like gender pay gaps and and you know the fact that I think it was 1972 before a woman in the UK could open a bank account without wow. um, permission of her father or her husband so you know there, there was stuff but I never noticed it because I was just enjoying life I think having a good time <laughs> the boys always had better toys <laughs> you see that? yeah um how interesting that out of that out of that stem this equity right not not a uh, despisement or anything like that it was it was this uh uh honoring your feminine and Absolutely. also exploring the masculine and and so i'm curious about that did you have a an idea that you would go into what you're into i mean what woke you up to this <laughs> so in 2017, I went to um, a conference in London called the One Woman Conference, uh, run by an amazing company called One of Many. And their whole premise is that women need to empower their natural femininity rather than in trying to empower themselves in, in the current world from, um, you know, in, in the masculine. Yeah. And um, I was at the One Woman Conference and we'd been looking at we'd been looking at ancestry and how seven generations ago there were 64 people that had to live and survive and procreate for us to be living today and i was that was a, an amazing kind of wow and all those people if you were to be able to go back to all those generations and say what do you want most of them probably said a better life for, for my kids and a better life for my grandchildren and and so on down the generation Interesting. and we did an exercise where we went seven generations into the future and we were looking at at what do you see seven generations from now and my vision wasn't particularly pleasant it was um basically we messed up the whole planet and it was pretty much dead and everything on it was pretty much dead and it was quite a scary vision and then the process brought us back to through the, these generations to the present moment asking the question what are you going to do today that is going to have an impact on what you saw and having spent two days diving into femininity i was just filled with this i mean i love what they're doing for women but what about the men was the question what about the guys huh I want the guys on my journey. I love guys. I grew up with, with boys, you know. I don't want a world where the feminine takes over. I want to see equity. I want to see everyone getting what they need. And uh, I, I was, you know, we were asked, you know, the microphone went round, who's got something to say? And I just put my hand in the air and stood up in front of 500 women and and said, this is this is what I'm here to do is to to bring this to them to the guys because they need it too we're, we're in a shifting world we're in a place where the paradigms are moving so quickly we need to do this together this has yeah. to be together yeah it's not um, what i hear in that is it's not that one's better than the other in either direction no right? it's this equanimity it's this power that we both have in in the masculine and the feminine and bringing that together and so um, what stemmed from that? So you do that event and you share that. This is what I'm up to. This is what I'm going to do. You declare your, your creation, right? I declared at that point. And then I yeah. spent another couple of years kind of going into that questioning space of who, who am I? 
who am I to take this out into the world? Who am I to coach men? Um, so I, I was, I already had my own business. I was already coaching. I was a hypnotherapist. So I was doing hip hypnosis and coaching. And I already saw quite a lot of guys in my practice. So I realized that this was, you know, it was a slow process of, of embracing what I'm here to do. And then probably at the end of 20, about end of 2019, last three months or so of 2019, I just said, okay, that's it. I am going to step over. I'm going to move away from one and embrace the other. And it was quite an unstable space because I felt like I had a foot in two canoes, you know, like one in one canoe and one yeah. in the other. And it was like, oh, it was all a bit <laughs> unstable. Yeah. Um, and, and I didn't know how told, to. And, you're telling you know, everybody around you, I got this. I got this. I know what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. I'm balanced. In, in the meantime, I'm, you know, the canoes are going off in all directions. Yeah. And it was it was it was funny. Actually, it was in a coaching session when I was asked, how do you how do you step across when both things are so mobile? And I realized I needed to lash them together to create the stability. Huh. So I could then step from one into the other and then you can let the other one go. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I did that, um, got it all ready to go to go to market. And then and then COVID happened. Huh. And uh, I've, I've just kept on. Just keep going with it. Keep this is what I'm here to do. It's my mission. Interesting. I'd imagine as yeah. you know, and I, I try and imagine and put myself in your world as you're doing this and picture the book, the journey in the book. And you have this moment in your life where you make this declaration, I'm going to the land of the giants, right? Yeah. And you yeah. declare this thing of I'm going to serve men and you step out into the unknown path, the uncertain path, and you don't know what to expect, but you know, you're going to stay on that path. And so 2020 hits COVID hits and you decide, no, I'm on the path. I'm not going yeah. back to that old life. No. And so we're with that uncertainty that, that likely came up in that, um, how did that impact you? I think like everyone, it was a little bit of a, you know, it was a bit of a blow. And I think I, I, I took a little bit of time to gather myself as it were. Yeah. Um, I kind of went to ground for a little while and, 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 and really kind of started looking at what I actually wanted to do and how I want, how I wanted to create my world. Yeah. Um, and kind of within that declaration, doing it the way I want to do it and and really feeling into you know this you know what you're here to do you've got it yeah. yeah I got a bit distracted along the way and you know fear and worry and what have you did definitely show its ugly face but I just kept on coming back just keep coming back to that to that knowing yeah um and then towards the end of last year I started doing a program with Rich Litvin uh, I know, Rich. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and that's yeah. been amazing, life changing. I hired Rich as my coach years ago after going to Steve Chandler's coaching school. Right. And I worked with Rich for about six months, and uh, he was he was just beginning in his journey. He hadn't written Prosperous Coach yet, and uh, man, what an incredibly powerful creator that guy yeah. is. That yeah. guy is the epitome of confidence and boldness, and he didn't used to be. That's the beauty of that guy. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I love, I love his approach, and yeah. uh, it has been. It's a group coaching program, and I have met some amazing people there who have inspired me and and held me in a space that has allowed me to really flourish and really grow. Yeah. And uh, I, I constantly feel like I'm at the beginning of my journey, kind of constantly reinventing yeah. and going out and and taking the next steps and, and you know it's that it is that journey from from the small to the giant just keep yeah. following the giants keep following the giants wow what a statement let me let me write that down because uh here's here's where i see in your journey is let me try and do two things at once which i'm not very effective <laughs> at <laughs> let me get one done i'll add that and then we'll talk about it is that you go out on this path and you stand on the shoulder of giants, Rich Lipman and others, this group, mm. this entire group, and you stand and you have this vision. And this sure right here, possible. where is it? Right, right there in the middle. Yeah, you got there. it. <laughs> there you go. 
So you have this vision on the shoulder of giants and not their vision. It's not their vision. It's no. your vision. And you start to see what's possible for you. And so you have this growth. You just know one thing. I've, I have a vision and I yeah. know this, I'm not going back to that yeah. old life. Yeah. And so you've outgrown immediately. You've outgrown your old life. And so you're stepping into this uncertain path. And this is where people get hung up is they want yeah. certainty. We, yeah. And actually the part, the part of, um, of the book that, that really resonated with me when I read it was, was yeah. that, that picture where he's in the bed and his clothes don't fit him anymore and the bed's broken and the house yeah. is, you know, and I kind of felt like that. It's like, Oh God, there is no going back now. Oh, I don't know yeah. if you can see that, but yeah. Yeah. It's got a little green screen going, but yeah. 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 He looks like he's been had a really rough uh, night of drinking. But <laughs> <laughs> that's how life can feel, though. It yeah. Feel like, man, I got a hangover from and my. That's, and that's possibly the scariest part because huh. you know you know your clothes don't fit anymore and you've broken the house and and the mm. you know and and although you know you if you go back you will shrink again. Yeah. You've broken everything. It's never going to be the same. Whichever way you go, it's you'll never going to be. The and same. you'll always know too now there's this level of understanding and consciousness where you've seen something different and better and greater yeah yeah for me would be like yeah that would be like a hard thing to like consciously choose to then go back to playing small because i always knew what the possibilities were this might be in the sequel there the um the land of the in between you know because how many people get that experience they've over they've outgrown the old life but they stay there yeah of, and then shrink back yeah slowly you know they, yeah. they return to an old way that they no longer belong in they no longer fit in and so what would you tell people in that case when you've when you've experienced that growth and you've had your vision is what would you not necessarily advise but what would you share as a piece of wisdom through that i think you've just got to trust yourself You've just got to trust and the process you've, you know, you've made that commitment at some point, you made the commitment to go on the journey. You know, you've packed your, you've packed your sandwiches and you've, you know, you've taken the first steps. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, you, you might need to, you might, you might need to stop. You might need to kind of go hold up in a hotel on the way kind of thing and just take some space. (laughs) Right. But but don't go back. Don't go back. Because that that's when that's when regret happens. And that's what I see a lot with the guys that I work with. You know, they reach a certain age where they've just worked and worked and worked and created their their business or their career path. And they've sacrificed along the way and they've given up friends and they've stopped doing the things that bring them joy. And, you know, the, the, the classic grey men in suits. You know, they weren't grey men when they were young. Right. They right. were dynamic go-getters that were had vision and purpose. And then they let all of that, all of that joy go, and they reach that certain age and suddenly go, "Oh, what happened?" Right. Right. And they've they've gone back on their dreams and they've compromised their own integrity, all for good reason. They will all have a story as to why that was a really good idea. Yeah. Um, and it's usually around career progression and, and creating a secure space for their families. And no matter the story, you're right. No matter the story, you have some justification in that story. And you could yeah. use that to, to continue living a life way below your potential. Yeah. Whatever the story is, it doesn't matter. It could be anything. I can do Absolutely. this because I can't do this because. You're yeah. right. You're right. Hmm. So, yeah. What, what do you think around that? What comes up as you hear that, as you share that? I was believing the stories we tell ourselves. You know, we, we create a narrative, huh. and it's usually to justify our limitations. Isn't that interesting? Like, you could, you could flip that the other direction and tell yourself a different story and yeah. believe that. Instead. Right? Yeah. So in the book, there's that part where they're walking through the forest, right? And it's dark and it's scary and, and he, he's uncertain and he feels the leaf brush across his face and he, face and he freaks out. He creates a story yeah. of what's going on. And, and the giant teaches him, look, you're the, you're the author. 
yeah. you're the narrator. So what are you creating? And, and what's interesting is I can share this and it's something that I'm learning inside of myself that, that, yeah, fear, that fear is a story. Um, and I love this in my conversation with Steve Hardison yesterday, he shared an experience about a motorcycle and that two different guys in the same experience, same event had different stories to tell. One was out of fear and one was excitement, pure joy, same event, different mm -hmm. story. And so and they we, were both yeah. right. And they were both right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. I wrote a blog about this. About this, I, I lived in India for many years, and um, they tell a story about the bl the blind men who who all approach an elephant. Yes. Yeah. And they all elephant. get a different part. You know, one gets the tail, and one gets the trunk, and 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 they they are describing what an elephant is. Yeah. But each description is completely different from the next one. But I yet they're all correct. I feel compelled with that poem, right? It was six men of Indistan, a learning much inclined who went to see the elephant, though each of them were blind. Mm -hmm. That each, each through observation might satisfy his mind. And they were all right, right? Like yeah. they all were right in what they saw, yeah. but they didn't see the whole picture. Yeah. And, and it's uh, what an analogy for life is. How much do we go through with our vision of what life is? And we're right. And tell the stories to justify our yeah. perspective yeah and only our perspective huh. and so sometimes you do need to you need to stop you need to take a step back and and question question your perceptions question your reality question is that is that hard for like i think that's hard for people sometimes because it's it's we talked about this just before we came on was like the 18 inch drop right yeah. you're coming from an ego space um which can be hard to break from because it's exposing yourself, I guess, a little bit. I don't know. That's how I feel sometimes. I'm like, oh, so, so even the self reflection. That, you know, Ryan, as you say that, I hear, isn't it hard that this happens? And it puts out there into the other person's world to hear it from the space of this is hard. And and even our languaging that we share with other people of, isn't it hard? And then we start to listen from that. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not hard. Maybe it's it is just a neutral event. Mm -hmm. I think it was Shakespeare that said, "And thinking makes it so." Mm. You know, we we create in, in, in this created life. You can create it whichever way you want it to be, and whatever whatever the stories are that you choose to believe. And I do think it is a choice. And, and a justification as to why you're choosing that. There'll be lots of reasons that you're, oh, it's because of my family, it's because of my work, it's because of, oh, I can't do that because the weather's not right or whatever right. it is. Right. We'll create a reason and then we'll stick to that. And that's what stops us and that's what holds us back. How do, how do you think that keeps, well, let me know. I, I, I boxed you in with this. <laughs> how do you think that keeps men from reaching their masculine or even women from reaching the masculine. Let me, let me rephrase that is how could that impact accessing your masculine? So, oh, this is a, that's, so you have boxed me in and this is, I could talk for hours on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I use masculine archetypes. So I use six okay. different masculine archetypes. Yeah. Um, I'm archetypes ready. are, Jung popularized them. He he had 12 archetypes. And an archetype is essentially something that we all culturally innately understand. So if you were to say to pretty much anyone anywhere in the world, um, it could you act out how to be a father? They'd go, oh, yeah, I, I know what that means. Right. Or can you be a king? Oh, yeah, I, I, I get that. I can. Yeah. I, so it's an it's a real kind of understanding. And when you look at the archetypes, they have a kind of a balanced um, energy. I'm going to use the word energy. They have a balanced energy, but they also have a state when there's too much of that energy or too little of it. And within the work that I do, I work on allowing men to access a full range of masculinity. So I use the king, the father, the lover, the warrior, the hero, and the sorcerer. Because it's like a team. If you just work on one, and, and it's my belief that actually the, 
problem with the, and I'm going to use the old air quotes for the patriarchy that everyone talks about. This is an overexpression of king. This is where dominion comes in. This is where, if you think of a tyrannical king, yeah, yeah, you know, you will do my bidding. It's all for me. I'm going to conquer the world. I'm going to take over. This is all dominion of others. Yeah, okay. Whereas in balance, the king is an incredibly powerful space if he's got a balanced and equitable access to this energy. You know, he is the born leader. He's got order and structure. He's boundaried. He knows what his yeses and his no no's mean. People respect him. They serve him. But equally, he serves his realm. And it's an incredibly powerful space. But if we only use king... Then there's a you know what about the man the, the part of your masculinity that's the lover what's about what about the part of your masculinity that's the father what about your your sorcerer that magical part of you what about the hero the the guy who's just out there looking after his community and and making sure everyone's okay yeah um, what about the warrior who who needs to get out there and fight for his fight for his cause and then kick back and play there's so many aspects to um, masculinity that I even, think a lot of them get a lot of them are either over expressing under expressing or they're just just not being accessed at all I, I think about this with the idea of masculine and feminine is that as a man um, stepping into and owning my feminine side too you know there's mm -hmm. there's a, a point of the masculine for me and, and you can help correct me in this if my vision is a little off is that we're drivers we get out there we push and we create and the feminine receives. And so this balancing of that, of, of giving and receiving, and I feel like we all have both of those within us, mm. of that giver and that receiver. Yeah, so if you look at the uh, the, the classic yin yang symbol, you've, yeah. got the, the, you've got the sort of, I don't even know what shapes they are, mango shapes that, yeah. that interlock. And within each one, they have a little bit of the opposite. So in the black side, you have a little bit of white yeah. side, in the white side, you've got a little bit of black side. So this is where the feminine and the masculine have an element of each other within them. But when we look at that as a two-dimensional um, picture, it's mm. very even. And life, I don't think, is like that. So I like to imagine the yin-yang as a, as, a, as a ball that's divided that way, that is mobile. So when the masculine expands, the feminine yields for it. Oh. And then when the feminine expands the masculine yields for it isn't it the so earth and the moon because the 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 pull of the the moon actually flexes the yeah. earth and causes tides it's yeah so so this is what my version of equity is and this is why i don't use the word equality because equality is that two-dimensional yeah, it's yeah. 50 50 right whereas equity you know if you want to drink tea and i want to drink coffee Equality says we pour half and half into, you know, two cups and we both get a grotty drink that it's, neither of us want to want to drink and don't right. enjoy. Equity says you get to drink your tea and I get to drink my coffee and we enjoy it. Huh. Doesn't mean you're right and I'm wrong. It just means we get what we need. And huh. there's a really lovely, when I started looking into this, I... I um, I googled, of course, I googled equity. There was a fantastic infographic that came up. And it was of three guys that there's a football game and, and they're trying to see over a fence to watch this football game. So there's a tall guy and he's got a great view. And then there's a medium sized guy and the fence is kind of here for him. So he's kind of can see but it's not really great. And then there's a short guy and he doesn't get to see any of the game. He can't see anything. So the fence is up here. So equality says you give them all a box. Each one gets a box. And so now the tall guy, he's got an even better view. The medium guy, he now can see the game. But the little guy, he's, he still can't really see it because the fence is, he hasn't huh. reached that point. Equity says tall guy doesn't need a box. Medium guy, he still needs a box to get to see. And the little guy gets two boxes and now they can all see the game. Wow. And I think it's a perfect example of if we live in an equitable world, 
where everyone gets to do their best and be who they need to be and are supported in doing that, it's a win. Yeah, I, I wanna highlight this picture. I don't even know which way to go here. The one in the middle, right? Again, in this, in the story, he, he chases the giant and he's like, what are you doing? Don't you realize I'm a small? He says, yeah, he says, tell me what you see. And he says, I just see weeds and bushes. I don't see anything. Why are you asking me? And he says, okay, what do you see? And he asks him again, it's the same thing. He's irritated that, that he's, all he sees is weeds. You like drag me in a way, small thinking this far to just see weeds. And he puts him on his shoulders and he stands up, right? And he says, now what do you see? And he can't speak because he's never seen anything like it. And that equity, like what you're talking about, the two boxes, the one box is that creating a situation where you have an ability to see beyond what you currently see to see to have a vision of what's possible for you yeah and so and that's different for everybody i i had a coaching conversation this morning and it was around something totally different from any of this but the person that i coached it was perfect for her and her vision and her creation yeah right and, and holding it reminds me actually of, I, I used to to live on the beach in in, in india in goa and um my ex-husband a friend of his from Canada had called up and said, look, I've got a friend arriving. Can you just sort him out somewhere to stay and make sure he's OK? He's never been to India before. So he arrived and we got a taxi to pick him up and bring him to a, a little a little guest house right on the beach, overlooking the ocean, rice fields behind. Huh. And so this guy had been traveling a long time. He was tired. He was hungry, probably you know, never been to India before, and it is quite an overwhelming space um, when you first get there. And he arrived, and and uh, my ex-husband went to, to meet him, and he was just like, "Get me out of here! I I, I can't I can't spend it. Just book me on another flight. Get me out! I cannot stand it." He said, "Look at this place. It's disgusting. Look, there's sandbags because it was fairly newly built. There was rubble, and there was sandbags, and there's in and and." My ex-husband looked at him and he went, that's really strange that you see all the all of that. He said, because you know what I see? I see the beautiful ocean and I see the palm trees and I see the rice fields. Hmm. And this guy looked up and went, oh, yeah. And he hadn't seen it because he'd been so focused on all that was different, all that was negative in his mind. He hadn't been able to see any of the beauty. He hadn't been able to see that he and just arrived in this amazing place. Did he see it after that? He did. In that moment, there was that kind of, oh, right. Okay. And it is whatever you focus on reveals itself. Ryan, can you pull up Hugh's comment again? You bet. Yeah. Can the giant see from the smallest perspective? What your husband did, your ex-husband did there was help the other person to see another perspective but to do that sometimes you you get to put yourself over on the other side of the fence in their world to see the world like they see it so that you can then give them another perspective and and so the answer in my view is is yes but Fiona what do you hear around that I th I think I think it, you know, if we use the book as, as in the story, sure. you get to, you get to the end of the story and, and you realize the giant was once a small. Yeah. And so I think every giant probably does. Very, no, I don't know. Is anyone born a giant? Maybe maybe there's some very rare few who, who are born a giant. Most giants got there for, on a journey. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think they can see it if they want to i don't think they necessarily do always sometimes they don't they choose not to yeah yeah getting getting on the other person's map right like yeah up over on their side of the fence to see what yeah. they're seeing it's the yeah, argument and if you, you know if you use the if you've got the three guys watching the watching the yeah. match yeah yeah the tall guy you know he 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 wasn't always that tall right there was a time when he was younger and smaller and and he stood on the other side of the fence i can't see the game right but he grew taller, so he can he can understand, and that's maybe where our responsibility is. You know, we talked about service, our responsibility to serve those and help others see, because the small guy won't know 
what it's like to be tall because he's never been there whereas the guy that's grown tall has been through that yeah it's where yeah. steve hardison somebody like a steve hardison is so powerful is because yeah. he does that for others he yeah. helps them to you know he gives them a box or two to step up and say hey look at this look at the view he puts them on yeah. his shoulders and say hey i was there yeah. i know i remember i know how it was but yeah, look absolutely. let's change your perspective a bit yeah and it is it's perspective isn't it yeah so asking this you know how does this tie into masculinity i think so i i, I often talk to guys about do you remember when windows xp came out yeah i think it was 2001 and we all went, yay, operating system to die for. It was amazing. Woo I thought that was 1975. I'm sorry. I was way <laughs> <laughs> It felt, feels like it. Yeah. But there, there was a time when Windows XP served a purpose perfectly. It fitted exactly where it needed to be. If we were trying to do this and we were all running Windows XP, well, we wouldn't be able to do this. It wouldn't work. And if it did, oh, actually, it would that's slow what I was running. Clunk. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That'll be the problem. <laughs> that explains all my problems. <laughs> and just actually, kidding. what you've just said is exactly right. Guys, the nurturing and the what you were brought up with, what your fathers and your grandfathers taught you worked perfectly for them back in that time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fit for purpose anymore. Because mm. the world you the guys are living in now is not that so if they're running programs that say certain things and their life is is not matching that then that's where all their problems come in well in our last video with maureen pisani um that's what she talked about is your operating program is out of date so if you're yeah. running on an old program that was handed down and here's the beauty of it is there was not malintent with that program no. that handed down your, no. your forefathers, your parents were all trying to do the best for you to have a better world for you. Yeah. So they handed down what they knew to create exactly. that. The challenge so, is it's not, it's not up to date. No. So that's the work I do is I try and you know, change the operating system, bring the operating system up to date um, for men so they can see, so their perspective changes. Yeah. And they can see what's relevant, what's not relevant. You know, I, I'll talk to guys who are in relationships with women those women are earning the same or possibly more money than they are yet these guys still go but it's my responsibility to make sure the family's okay yeah it yeah. actually comes down to me huh. so so the programming says you need to be the breadwinner you need to be and even if they know and academically understand that's not the case they still feel it huh yeah, interesting. That's interesting because it's um, we have these these types that we've created as far as how a man should show up, and some of that in in the uh, current age is is a little different than it was when I was a kid. Even yeah, so I, would, I was taught you go out and you work and you provide and you do all these things, and and now we're in a space where, man, in equity, women have the ability to create as much as men. It's not. It's not about equality. It's like you say, it's about equity. They're in a position where anybody in the world, it doesn't matter where you are, you can create something equal to anybody yeah. else. You can. Yeah. And so, yeah, updating and it, that. It, and I mean, this works the same way, way for women as well. You know, when I look at my childhood, as wonderful as it was, um, it was never expected that I needed to be educated. My brother needed to be educated. Right. So my the whole expectation was that you know he'll he'll go to uni he'll have a career right Fiona, she'll get married and she'll have children and it was not a spoken thing it was a socially acceptable expectation that was kind of present yeah certainly from certainly from my father was that you know that's what girls do yeah I find a good husband kind of thing it's never been my reality i've always worked you know so teaching my girls that uh, they should marry for money and learn to love that's wrong <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think i'm just kidding 
<laughs> like you're awake. Yeah, you're, you're doing good. Good job. No, but, but that that thought, you know, or you know, women can do anything men can do, or men can do anything women can do, or we 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 fail to honor uh, who we are individually. Like maybe you are the short person, maybe you're the tall person. What can you do with that? Yeah. It's not about one gender over another. It's not about height. It's not about any of that. It's about your individual journey, which is what the book is about. Yes. It's an individual journey. And I think when people read it and they see it as two class groups, they're reading it wrong because it's not about anybody but yourself. That whole book is the internal journey that each of us goes through when we learn that we have potential and we step out into the unknown and we step into that potential. Yeah. And and so what about that? That equity says that you might be born in a family in India that's impoverished. Yeah. And you have a dream and a goal and a vision to create something fantastic from that. Are you any different from a giant who's born like Maureen Pisani, uh, you know, in an island that nobody knows about, a dot in the middle of the ocean? Are you any less privileged than her or somebody born in America? And that'd be equity. down to your perception. Yeah. Equity says no. You, yeah, and equity says no. Huh. Yeah. So I like this comment by Nicole me. where that, you know, not necessarily that she can do what men can do. That's not her, maybe her role or, or you know, she can do what she can do. Yeah. And yeah. she can just be, she yeah. can be Nicole to the, to the uh, highest potential that Nicole can I, be. And And that's what equity speaks to. It speaks to have it, whatever you have, whatever your, you know, if, if a, you know, equality and, and if, if a guy wants to be a midwife or a woman wants to become a soldier or you know, whatever, go and knock yourself out. You can be whatever you want to be. Yeah. You know, we are different. You know, probably if well, yesterday I was at the garden center and I went to pick up 125 kilos of, of soil to bring, bring home and I was like, oh, <laughs> I can't lift this yeah. on my own, you know? Yeah. I have to kind of shuffle it into the trolley. Um, you know, a guy comes along and, and he can pick it up, you know? So it's yeah. it's not that he's a guy and that I'm a girl. It's that our muscles are different. Yeah. And that's not to say I can't train myself to be able to pick that up. And it doesn't mean that a guy automatically should be able to pick it up. But generally speaking... We're different you know I, we process differently we have different hormones you know you can't have babies you know yet. it's like we are yet <laughs> but it, we are just different so let's embrace those really differences. Not an ambition of mine, but... <laughs> you know but let's embrace the differences enjoy the fact that we are I, who we are i like hugh's perspective two trips <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. Hugh. So, so the idea, you know, here's here's where I see Fiona. Fiona is like the Trojan horse of masculinity in a way. Like if a man were to get on here and, and talk about masculinity, people would be, of, of course, a guy is going to talk about masculinity, right? Fiona comes on and she talks about masculinity. It's like, I don't know what to do. There's a woman that believes that masculinity is this is a powerful thing that men can own and, and women too. And it ties into the feminine. It doesn't dishonor any of it. No, no. There, I, there was a lovely story that I heard um, recently, and it's a it's a Cherokee story um, about the bird of humanity. And, and I think this really sums it up beautifully. And it says that the bird of humanity, for the last couple of thousand years, the masculine wing of the bird of humanity, so the bird obviously has two wings, has been dominant. It's done all the work. It's been mm. doing all the flying. It's taken on all of the, all of the big stuff. Yeah. And it's become strong and dominant and huge. And the fe the the feminine wing of the bird of humanity has, by contrast, not really been as exercised, and hasn't done all the big stuff. It's been doing much more of the small stuff, and it's much smaller and weaker. And the rise of the divine feminine that this feminine arm is getting used and stronger and women are taking up their rightful place in the world not only strengthens the feminine but takes the pressure off the masculine wing yeah. so the masculine wing doesn't have to do all the dominant stuff anymore and when we've got that both wings working together 
Yeah. That's when yeah. the bird of humanity can fly and soar. That's beautiful because that could go in the other extreme too. The feminine could be the strong arm. And, and that's not going to work either. Right. It throws you into flying in circles. And You're just in the opposite masculine, direction. Yeah. If the masculine is dominant, we fly in circles. It's all about creating that balance, but balance doesn't mean equality. No. But equity is such a beautiful term. I haven't thought of equity, you know. Yeah. 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 So when people ask me, are you a feminist? I'm, I have to say no. Yeah. Um, but I am an equitist. Uh, uh, I like that. Yeah. And man, what a, what a shift in perspective, right? I am an equitist. Yeah. And, and as a statement, as an I am statement, right? As who you are being. This isn't. This doesn't seem to me like something that you discovered and decided that would be nice to become that. And I'm going to practice every day so I can become that. It was almost as though this was already inside of you, and you uncovered it. Like, guess guess what? I am an equitist. Am I off on that? Yeah, I don't think I'd ever put it into language until a year or so ago. Okay. You know, and it was around this there's got to be a better word because equality, I, I get what the general purpose of, of the word equality is. And yeah. you know, I don't disagree with equality. But I think equity is a better word. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it speaks to all genders, all people. It, it, it respects the planet. It respects all the creatures on the planet. Yeah. It covers co covers everything and, and quality, you know, it's a, I don't know, it might be my perception of it, but it all feels like it's 50 50. Yeah. And not everything it, is 50 50. Right. Yeah, I like that. Um, I think about that, you know, that, that there are a lot of systems governments designed around that equality. And, you know, even in families or work or different things, we think in terms of equality. I want to have equal share, fair share. And equity goes beyond that. You know, it's what's needed in the situation and in the individual. It's, it's not about uh, equal shares. It's not about cutting the pie up in equal no. portions. It's, it's about this person over here might need a little more than somebody over there. Right. I remember a guy that I, I worked with, he, um, him and his wife were not seeing eye to eye anymore. And she was all about this equality thing. And yeah. um, so his demonstration was to just make half the bed. He said, I've made my half. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how that's how trivial it becomes when we're all trying to do this. Let's break it up 50 yeah. 50, you know, I'll yeah, make my half of the bed. That's funny. Holy cow. Yeah, not my job. I'm not going to do more than I need to. That's equality. Equity yeah. says I'm going to do what needs to, what serves, you know. Yeah, it's, it's what serves. Yeah. yeah so, the high good. you know, going into this, like, how do you, how do you keep going every day? What, what are some of your routines that you go into every day to keep going on the path of uncertainty? Okay, so I, lockdown has taught me a huge amount about the need for ritual. Oh. And it's something I did, you know, I, I kind of dabbled with before. Um, but now my day starts with I, I wake up, I pick up my journal, I journal for two pages. Um, and my journaling's changed over the years. It's um, now I do a couple of pages of, of just writing about whatever is in my head. Then I do some I am statements. And then I do 10 things to be grateful for. Um, and I do my gratitude at the beginning of the day because it's this whole process just sets up my mentality. Yeah. I don't wake up fresh. I'd, I've always wanted to be one of those people that throws back the covers and leaps from the bed. Yeah. I, I wake up tired. Music. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I wake up kind of like, can I, can I, can I thinking like Cinderella, like the birds, and like they put, put yeah, your exactly. dress on for you. Yeah. Everything's perfect. Ah. No, that's not how it happens for me. 
Oh, yeah, that picture is frozen. I think when she wakes up and she's drooling and her hair is all disheveled <laughs> and she's like, you know, that's me. I wake up, I wake up with that adrenaline going through my body and yeah. I'm like, I don't want to get out of bed. Exactly. But then so I, the ritual, right? Yeah. So, so I do my journaling and then yeah. I do some sort of meditative stuff. It might be, it might be um, a, a formal meditation. It might be some a, a practice of some description but I do some quiet space meditation yeah. time then I get up and I eat my breakfast and then I go out for a walk and I walk for about 45 minutes yeah um and I usually listen to a book because it it kind of kills two birds with one stone yeah um then I get back and I get ready for my day and that usually involves a cold shower well it always involves a cold shower so I, I have my hot shower I have my cold shower because if I if I can have a cold shower, I can do anything. <laughs> there is nothing I can't do if I can have a cold shower. Yeah. You got to look back at Nick, and Nick d does some uh, some of that stuff. We did uh, got into a frozen lake, concentrating oh. on breathing, yeah. and uh, he does cold showers as well. Well, there's there's physiological benefits to that, and walking and different things. It's, it's that it prepares your body for trauma for shock. So that when you do experience it, it's it's less than, less impactful on your body, and so that yeah. cold shower is, that's that's something I I do, and then I get out of that train, right? Yeah. But it's one of those trains that I this week will be getting back onto because I'm going into some really uncertain times, and that that preparing yourself for stress kind of offsets offsets any thoughts of stress that you might yeah. have. Yeah. So I have a little shower playlist. Okay. that I put on yeah um, my favorite is uh, you sexy thing by hot chocolate <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> and I and I and I dance because it because the dancing keeps yeah. me mobile in the cold shower because it's only when you when, just when you stiffen up and you're like oh this yeah. is really cool. so I try and get my three minutes um three to four minutes under the cold oh man you were a, a, yes. you, using the playlist good for you yeah. You sexy thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. In the comments and as a video so people can see it. So let me ask you this. Yeah, got it. There you go. That keeps it going. Like, I, I'm digging that. Yeah. yeah. And you can move really nicely to this. Yeah. That's I, can, I can do this in the shower. That's great lyrics. <laughs> that's beautiful i love it you know the ritual the ritual is so valuable that that what you do first thing in the morning when you get out of bed it, it matters it i found myself in some some cases where my ritual is to just jump in and swipe through facebook and my day goes totally different from yeah. when i do a meditation and i journal and i get really intentional about my day and so, hey, uh, he, he has a great comment, Nick. Yeah. Got to say it out loud. <laughs> I wake up looking for the fractal of my day. Yes, Nick loves fractals. Yeah, we have a running, running. Uh, hey, it's a learning and a joke. It's awesome. It's but a little Mandelbrot. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. Love Mandelbrot. And and the beauty of Mandelbrot yeah. is that simple equations repeated create complexity. And in our lives, it's really, we're not doing complex equations here. We're doing simple things. We add to them. We repeat yeah. them. We do it again. We add to it. We repeat it. <laughs> My F word. <laughs> I love that, she, that Fiona knew, like, Mandelbrot. That, yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. I have dance parties in Goa. If they don't teach you, they teach you fractals, or they teach you the Mandelbrot little, it looks like a little guy, doesn't it? Looks like yeah. a little man, yeah, a little bit. person, and then you go deeper into it. And, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and what a metaphor for life is there is no completeness to your giant potential. That yeah. when you reach one pinnacle, you see another. Mm -hmm. And you go for that, and you go through the journey again. Yeah. But this time you've grown, right? It's so a different it's journey. The same, same process, different journey. Yeah. And so I'm going through that right now. You know, I, I've stepped onto a path that has a new pinnacle for me that I couldn't see from the old pinnacle. If I were to build my house on that old mountain, it would have been okay. Life mm. would be fine, mm. but I don't want to stay there. 
And so to be able to venture out and find another pinnacle and increase in giant stature is the yeah. idea of Mandelbrot. It's that there are no limits to your giant potential. I really you like that. If you want to be. Yeah. I've always used the spiral as the analogy because, you know, you feel like you've come around to the same yeah. place, but actually yep. you've come around at, the, at another level. So at a level up, looks, right? Yeah, it's a it's level spiraling up. Spiraling up is what we call it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's similar. I remember my son when he, he he's he's one of these he's kind of a mathsy kind of guy. Yeah. Um, and every year as he was That's growing up, yeah, yeah. mathsy, mathsy kind of guy. Yeah. Um, but every every year he'd he'd be like, but but we've done this. We did this last year, and and it was, it was like yeah, but you're learning another level of it. Yeah. You, you keep, yeah. You keep learning addition. You never stop learning addition. It's just a, you're just adding up bigger numbers and you know, doing them in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, so I would ask you this, you know, if you were to have a, a piece of wisdom looking back on your journey or talking to somebody, let's say you're having a conversation with somebody who's just beginning their journey and they decide, you know, I'm going to do a giant thing for myself. What would you share as far as a piece of wisdom with them? Commit to the journey. Hmm. Yeah. Can you describe what that means to you? Commit to the journey. What does that look like? It looks like, what does it look like? Committing to the journey. It looks like you just keep, you will go off course. You will wake up with days when you're going to scroll through Facebook instead of doing your meditation. Don't beat yourself up for that, but just keep self-correcting back to what it is you're, you're doing what is it you committed to what is that you know really knowing what what it is that you're trying to achieve without all the stories without all the the stuff commit to what it is whatever that essence is that you've you've here's here's the vision to do so an acorn commits yeah. to being a tree and yeah. it doesn't worry about all the bifurcations and branching it just yeah. knows one day I'll be a tree yeah. and it doesn't care about how it just steps out day by day. Yeah. And one day it might put a little energy over here and come back and put more energy into the primary branch, but it might twig out again. We'll call yeah. it twigging out, right? Twigging out. Yeah. You might twig out a little bit, mm -hmm. but you'll come back to the primary branch and in all of it, it all makes up the tree. And so, like you say, if you have an off day where you branch out and you're swiping through Facebook, you're, it's still part of the tree. It's, it's Forgive okay. yourself. Come yeah. back. Give some grace. Have some grace and, and look for the there's – always, there's always something in whatever you're doing. There's always a message. There's always a benefit. There's always a golden nugget. There's something. So maybe scrolling through Facebook, maybe you suddenly saw a message from somebody you've not been in touch with for ages. And you go, oh, it's their birthday. I'll wish them a happy birthday. You know, that's okay. Just do something positive with, with your twigging out. And then correct course and uh, come back there, to what the purpose is. There's a beauty in your narrative there. There's always something to learn versus this is wrong. Yeah, yeah. that perspective is awesome. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I found too, like as I go throughout my day and I, I follow my intuition, and if there's something that's just that's coming up, if I, I if I when I set it aside and don't get to it, then I never know that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I don't get to know that opportunity and where that would have gone and what that would have brought. When I follow my intuition, something comes up. It almost always bears something that I recognize pretty quickly, and I go, oh, "That's why I did that," <laughs> you know. Yeah. And sometimes it comes up that. way later. Yeah, we, but it happens. Don't we say, and then, and you get dot, dot, and dot. And then, because that's our running, that's mine and Nick's running thing. It's like the next thing. It's like, and then this happened. And then this happened. And I think sometimes we we try and make judgments on things. And that, again, that kind of comes from this headspace. And if we get down into the heart space and use discernment and kind of feel into things, mm -hmm. you know, I do, I actually do a nice little exercise where you, you literally just stand, stand solid and then you you work out which one it is for you so you think of something that's absolutely true that is an unwaverable non-negotiable so for me it would be i love my son 
nothing is ever going to change that. And if I feel into that, for me, I, I my body kind of pulls forward. Huh. And then to test it, you say, okay, you think of something that's absolutely abhorrent to you, that is just absolutely not within your your moral compass. And for me, that makes me go backwards. Some people are the other way around. Yeah. Everyone has their own thing. But in those moments of indecision, just standing in that space oh, and running yeah. it through your mind and see what <laughs> your body says. Where are you, Where is it pulling you? You know when things are right for you and you know when they're wrong for you. And often we go against that discernment within us and we do things because somebody else's story or there's another one of those shoulds yeah, that come yeah. in. Oh, I, I can't do this because it's raining or you know, whatever it is. <laughs> But so, if you so go want, into that space of discernment and it's like, yeah. no, actually, I've got to do this because this is what's right. I, I want to ask you this. If, you know, are, are you okay on time? We've mm, got an hour already. Time. And we won't, we won't extend this out for another two hours or anything. We'll go <laughs> maybe another five, 10 minutes max. But I want to talk about something that I heard this week that was beautiful for, for me from a friend who uh, is highly in tune with, with, me and and uh, one of the things she said to me with the decision I made this week mm. was that when the apple is ready it will fall off the tree and what we tend to do is we want to look around at all the other apples and see how we're doing in, in relation to the other apples we want to ask the other apples how do I do this when's the best time to fall off the tree that's when you know you're not ready because when it's time to fall off the tree you fall off the tree mm. and, and metaphorically speaking mm that when it is that. for you you're you're going to get off the nail you're going to fall off the tree you're going to do the thing that before you asking all the questions shows you're not quite ripe because yeah. if you were ripe you wouldn't be asking the questions because what you're trying to do is justify in your mind the decision to do or not do something mm. because when you do it you will do it and yeah what do you hear in that and it's it's reminding me of a of a conversation i had with i was in a it was a group of us and one of the one of the participants was talking about um i just need to think about it you know it was a problem they'd had for some time and they still needed to think about it one of the other people said if there was more thinking to be done you would have thought it by now oh, wow and i and i think that's that's really powerful sometimes you just when you, like you say, when you read, does, does the apple have to think about when it's going to drop off the tree? Or does it just know it just, it's just the right time, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't go, oh, should I today? Should I drop today or should I drop tomorrow? Yeah. Or maybe should next be, week. Should I be masculine? That's what I said you, you yesterday, you Nick, that? with the, with the snake. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, so Nick, Nick, that the snake knows that it's a snake. It doesn't need to be told that it's a snake. It knows what to do. It, it's got to eat. It's got to hunt. It's got to survive. It does its thing. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. yeah. It, it's not there in any insecurity wondering, like, how do I be a proper yeah. snake? <laughs> how do I do this? <laughs> oh, oh should, I, should I slither this way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slither that way. Am I slithering right? <laughs> am I slithering right? <laughs> yeah, am I twigging out here okay? Is it okay, everybody? And that's that ties right. Should I stand up? Yeah, yeah, right. The masculine knows at its core what to do. And asking for permission around that is what's held us up, is that we know intuitively what's right for our like you said, your body consciously or unconsciously knows which direction you need to go yeah. and it's our it's our thinking and then all the emotions that flood in after that and the conditioning that's yeah. told you that programming that said well to be a man you have to not cry or yes. yeah whatever that is yeah um who, who said that's that's who said that you know yeah. who told guys they couldn't cry I'm, I'm going to be I a little, all the time. I'll be a little <laughs> off. A on this. I, I cried the other day and I looked down and my stuff was still there. Like <laughs> I'm still a man, you know, yeah. like I, <laughs> I cry all the time. Like yeah. the, the thing is, is who gets to decide, you know, stoicism and things like that say, Oh, you, you never show your emotions, never show your weakness. Um, I can see where that could be useful in certain situations um and in battle maybe yeah and i can but see also shouldn't be a battle mm, yeah go ahead 
Go yeah, ahead. just I think I, I just think it's it's yeah. men have been taught some very rigid, yeah, some very rigid rules about what it is to yeah. be masculine. Yeah. Um, and when you look at a look at all of that, it's mostly in that too much energy. Huh. You know, one of one of the archetypes is is the lover, and um, you know, often you say the lover to guys, and you know, immediately they're just thinking sex. And it's and it's not. It's it's the lover of life. It's yes. it's all the it's, uh, it's wow. life through the senses. You know, and yeah. it's not just the bump and grind. You know, when I think of the overexpressed lover, I always think of Joey from Friends. You know, with the hi, how you doing? You know, right? How you doing? How you doing? And that how becomes a doing? filter. That becomes yeah. that. That becomes his reference for he sees a woman. Hey, how are you doing? You know, it's a filter. Whereas if you can drop down into that balance of, yeah, wow, yes, she's a beautiful woman. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yes, she smells great. Great. It's yeah. it's experiencing it through all of the senses. It's that 18 inch drop, right? It's the 18 inch drop. It's dropping down into your heart and feeling it and experiencing the love. Yeah. Wow. So how do how do we find you? How do people support you? become a part of what you're doing, follow you. Follow me. So I have a Facebook page. I'm, I'm, I'm not very, um, I'm not on all of the social media platforms because it just takes up too much of my day okay. to do that. So there's a Facebook group just for men called Because Men Matter. Okay. So that's just for guys to join. The, what, what's it called again? Because Men Matter. Okay. Um, and that's just for guys, and it's a space where I really want to see guys connecting. That they're, 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 I've got a lot of lurkers in there. They're kind of standing back, and there's, there's, there's still a there's still a bit of apprehension about yeah. getting involved. And I, I really want to create some some narrative in there and get the guys talking to each other about stuff. Yeah. But as that grows, that will start to happen. Um, there's a Facebook page which is Fiona Ross Coaching for Men. That's for men and women to join. Um, because a lot of women are really, you know, they're really, they're really on this. They, you know, we're all, you know, we're mums and, and daughters and and wives and partners. And most of us love the men in our lives and we, we want them to be happy. Yeah. You know, so, so women are really behind this. It's a, and, and often it's the women in men's lives that are saying to them, God, just go and get this, go and talk to somebody about this stuff that's bothering you. Because what's one of the things men don't do is they don't communicate it. They hold it all in. The old programming says, be a man. Yeah. Sort yeah. it out. Find your own solutions. And that's why we see suicide rates, at, 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 you know, the biggest killer of guys under the age of 45. It's, it's desperately sad that guys are going through this stuff alone. Um, so... FionaRoss.co.uk or .com will get you to my website. There's a blog on there to hear my wafflings about what I think about the world and, and uh, the men in it. I love waffles. I love waffles, too. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, did you not use that word, to waffle no, no. in America? <laughs> to flip-flop, to go back. And, yeah, no. Yeah, no, no it's I just talking it. about it. Just, you waffle yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm no, going right. to now. Well, when I come to listen to you waffle on, I'm bringing syrup. So. <laughs> yeah, maple syrup. <laughs> yeah. The real stuff, please. The real stuff. That's perfect. Is there anything else you want to share today? Just, I'd just like to say thanks. You know, I this has been a, such an honor to, to be on, on your show. And I absolutely love the concept of giants. And, you know, it's it's that's why i bought all the i've, I've got my i've got my 24 books here yeah, in the uk it, my yeah, client yeah. this goes in the little client package i love it um so so when guys sign up with me they get a they get a copy and hmm. uh, i think it's just such a great it's a great metaphor it's a great metaphor for everybody huh. isn't it amazing how it fits everywhere it doesn't matter what you're doing that journey is everybody's journey yeah it's uh it's it blows my mind uh 
it blows my mind and I'm learning from it and I wrote it and I, and I keep hearing these different views and perspectives and I keep learning from everybody, their, their version of the journey. And it's like, we've done 61 episodes today. You're number 61. Cool. And there's similarity in all of these journeys, but they're yeah. so different. And I love it. Yeah. I'm so grateful for it. Ryan, did you have any other thoughts here? You know, I just, I'm coming away with so many nuggets, you know, like, I don't know, there's, I'm, I'm going to go back through my notes and then digest all of this stuff that you talked about. Yeah. But uh, um, one thing that, that stuck out for me is, is one of the biggest is that there's always something, there's always that perspective and you can look at things, um, you know, good, bad, indifferent, whatever's happening yeah. in your life, you can choose. There's always that choice. And, you know, uh, gratitude is easy when it comes to the things that are going well. Right. It's easy to find things to be grateful for when it's all going well. But it's being grateful for the things that don't go well. That's where the real growth happens. You know, and I am grateful for all those things because they've made me who I am mm -hmm. right now and a better version, the, the Ryan 2.0 on a different operating system. And as I get to those next levels, I can see new perspective and keep following after those other giants. Keep following the giants. There's ten get, tens everywhere, yeah, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I see it. So there's lots of synchronicity. Ten ten on the clock. I love it. Yeah. This this is fantastic. So thank Look you for that. your time. There we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. down to eleven as well. <laughs> thank thank you so much for spending the time with us yes, and and doing well. the work that you're doing. We've had so many people that say, "Hey, we are are grateful for you. Yeah, uh, great job, great conversation." Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you everyone for watching and listening and. Grateful for our masculine giants. Absolutely. Well, for everybody watching as we wrap up here, uh, if you haven't checked out the Kickstarter, we were scrolling that across the bottom. Go back and get the link. Uh, Bit.ly slash giant Kickstarter is where you'll find that. And we have a goal between now and April 17th to raise $8,500. So pretty easy goal. If you want to support us in that, please do that. And go subscribe on our YouTube channel to see more videos. We have so many interviews just like this that will impact your life and help you on your giant's journey. And there's something different in each one of them. I've taken so many nuggets out of each one. And uh, continue to be a giant. If you haven't read the book, go get the book. Go get the book. The book is amazing. And I might be a little biased. Oh. But yeah, I think it's pretty good. But go, yeah. go get the book. <laughs> continue, continue to serve each other, support each other. And as always, go make it a giant day and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you, guys. Thank you.